Millie and Molly will never forget their first day at school. Millie, time to get up! And how they almost didn't become friends. Will you miss me, Marmalade? Oh, don't be like that. I have to go to school. You know you can't come. Marmalade? Are you dressed yet, Millie? Coming, Mum! Look, your mum is going to be here with you. Come on, Marmalade. Not very far away, Molly was having much the same conversation with her cat. Tom Cat, will you miss me today? Tom Cat? Dolly will be here to play with you. If you don't come to breakfast, Molly, you'll miss the school bus. And don't worry about Tom Cat. It's surprising how a cat can fill its day. But Marmalade's going to be lonely. Just hurry up with your breakfast, Millie. You'll miss the school bus. Try not to miss me too much, Marmalade. Try not to miss me too much, Tom Cat. Ah! Oh, Tom Cat! Marmalade? Tom Cat. Who's your friend, Marmalade? That's Tom Cat. He's my cat. How come you know he's Marmalade? I don't know. Tom Cat's come to see me off to school. <laughs> it's my first day. Marmalade too. I'm Millie. I'm Molly. Millie and Molly quickly found that they had different ideas about where the fun would lie at school. Mum says we're going to go on adventures to the zoo and see wild animals from Africa and... Well, I want to do paintings. And maybe add leaves to my leaf collection. And... Well, I like adventures more. Anyone going to school? Me! Have a good day, we'll you about everything. I will. You will. Bye-bye, Mum. Like, don't miss me too much. Don't worry, Tomcat. I'll be home straight after school. I'm sure they'll be waiting for you when you get home. Come on, you two. Worry about Marmalade and Tomcat. It's surprising how a cat can fill its day. When they got to school that first day, oh, it's December, Millie and Molly went in separate directions. and I'll be your teacher. We're going to have fun together, aren't we? OK. Oh, I think we can do better than that, can't we? Yes, Miss Blythe. Much better. Now, let's find out about you lot. My name is Millie, and I like big adventures. One day, I'm going to live at the South Pole and have penguins as pets. My name is Jack. I play soccer and I'm really, really good at it. You can beat everyone I ever play anywhere. My name is Molly. I like riddles. <laughs> um, sometimes I have trouble making up my mind. But when I grow up, I'm going to be a princess. I'm Humphrey and I think being a princess is silly. <laughs> Humphrey, be nice. Well, cos... cos... I'm going to be an astronaut and beat all the dinosaur robots that come from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Of course it's not. I'm sure beating all the dinosaur robots from outer space will be a very important job. Mm-hmm. Who's next? Sophie? Right. Millie liked Humphrey. He was loud and funny, so she hoped she might get a desk next to him. But Millie was seated next to Princess Molly, who seemed so different. Molly was disappointed too. She'd rather have been next to Elizabeth, who liked to draw neat drawings. <gasps> <laughs> Miss Blythe! 
Humphrey. Was that very nice? I was just, just, um, helping you draw better. <laughs> 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 Millie and Molly found that even their lunches were different. Millie never ate bananas like Molly did, and Molly didn't like apples the way Millie did. But after lunch, they were in for a big surprise. Now, may I see what everyone's been drawing? Oh, yes, lovely! Oh, what imagination! And what's this, Humphrey? It's a dinosaur from Mars blowing up a robot from the moon! <laughs> well, of course it is. And Elizabeth, I see that you've drawn... A rabbit! Oh, yes, of course. Very nice. And Luke, we have twins. Well, mine's a doll, Miss Blythe. Mine too. Well, I'm going to colour mine yellow. But yellow's my favourite colour. It's mine too. It's been mine... Even before I was born. Well, it's been mine since... Now, spin. don't argue. There's time to draw something different if you like. Something that's special to you. Um... Well, do you each have a pet? <gasps> Mama! Millie and Molly had completely forgotten about their precious cats. I had a cat first. No, I did. Well, my cat is nicer than <gasps> yours. By the time Millie and Molly got back to the bus stop, they weren't even talking to each other. Mama! Tomcat! Marmalade! Tomcat! Marmalade! Tomcat! Hello, darling. Tom How's school? Good. Where's Marmalade? Tomcat! I don't know. Probably waiting at home. Well, let's go! Tomcat! Molly! How was your first day? Have you got Tomcat? I thought he'd be here to meet me. Tomcat? No, sorry. Probably too busy. It's surprising how a cat can fill its day. Seen marmalade all day? All day? But Tomcat must have been missing me. He'll turn up. <laughs> but Tomcat didn't turn up. Tomcat! So a worried Molly Tomcat. went back to where she last saw her precious Tomcat. Marmalade! And Millie marmalade. had the same idea looking marmalade. for her precious marmalade. Oh, hello. Hello. Have you seen my Tomcat? He didn't come home. No. I'm still looking for marmalade. Marmalade? 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 Tom Where are Marmalade? you, Tomcat? Maybe they're together. They seem to know each other. What if... What if they missed us so much that they tried to find the school and... and got lost? Lost? No! Um... Let's start walking to school. We'll find them that way. Are you sure? No. Millie and Molly went through the park. Marmalade! Tomcat! Marmalade! Tomcat! I really miss you! Marmalade! They went past the town swimming pool. Where are you? Please, Tomcat, come back! Tomcat! Marmalade! And they went all the way back to school. Tomcat! Marmalade! They're not anywhere. I've got a bad feeling in my tummy. Me too. What if we never see them again? <gasps> uh... Let's go to the police station. Yeah, what if a robber took them? <gasps> the fastest way to the police station was back through the park. They ran as fast as they could. Look! Tomcat! Tomcat! Tomcat, it is you! Oh, Tomcat, I feel... Is Marmalade here too? Marmalade? Marmalade! <gasps> Molly, quick! What is it? <gasps> Kitten! Good girl, Marmalade. You're a mummy now. It is surprising how a cat can feel its day. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Tom Cat 
Daddy's my daddy? That means you and me are cousins, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Molly, will you help me find homes for the kittens? Well, if you teach me how to skip, only if you teach me how to do handstands. Okay, but you have to listen to all my riddles. Are they funny? Of course. All right. Why do cows wear belts? I don't know. Why? Because their horns don't work. <laughs> The next day, Millie and Molly caught the bus as the best of friends. They discovered that they might look different and even do some things differently. But inside, they feel the same. school for the term, when Miss Blythe gave the class a surprise project to do over the holidays. I want each and every one of you to grow a vegetable over the holidays and bring it back to show the class. Oh, yes. yes, Millie? But I don't know how to grow vegetables. Yeah. That's the point. You'll have to find out, won't you? Yes, Molly? Can we do it with a friend? Of course. And you each have to grow a vegetable of your own. And no, what? Humphrey, I don't want to see robots, man-eating lizards, or dynamite. Just vegetables. <laughs> so Millie and Molly went to get some advice from the best vegetable grower in the whole town. You go first. No, you. Okay, I'll go first. I don't think she's at home. Let's ask someone else. But Aunt Maud knows more about growing vegetables than anyone. But... Well, can't we ask someone who isn't so, hmm, snippy, crabby, impatient? Hard to get along with? Yes, yeah, she is. But Aunt Maud's the best gardener in the whole town. If you want to know about books, I can help you. But Aunt Maud really is the one to ask. You won't find anyone else who knows as much about growing vegetables in the whole town. I can help you with pets. And lost property and road safety, but vegetables? You really need to ask Aunt Maud about growing vegetables because she's the best... In the whole town. Mm-hmm. So Millie and Molly ended up back at Aunt Maud's and found her in the magnificent garden at the back of her house. Fiddlesticks! You can't grow vegetables? Why, Aunt Maud? You have to be able to stick at it all the time. You have to love your little green friends and tend them and give them your all. <coughs> hmm. Even when you don't feel like it, you have to have tenacity. Mm. That's why I'm the best gardener in the whole town. I'm tenacious. We can be tenacious too. Tenacious, tenacious, tenacious. Well, I don't believe it. But we can, Aunt Maud. We can, really. Oh. <laughs> we'll see. Come back tomorrow. Aunt Maud really didn't expect Millie and Molly to come back. She didn't think they'd be tenacious enough to do even that. But Millie and Molly surprised even themselves when they turned up to spend the next day with Aunt Maud, ready to learn how to be tenacious vegetable gardeners. But they had another surprise waiting for them out in the garden. Ow! What? Little sticks! Huh? I've hurt my wretched leg! Can't get up! We'll get you some help, Aunt Maud. I don't want any help, hmm? but I especially don't want any doctors. What kind of doctor are you? Six weeks? Fiddlesticks. You've broken your leg, Aunt Maud. It'll take that long to mend. Well, what am I going to do all that time? And who's going to look after my garden? We'll look after it, Aunt Maud. But you have to tell us what to do. You? Ah, you won't stick at it. Yes, we will. We came back today, didn't we? One day. I'm talking six weeks. <laughs> I'd try to find something to keep Aunt Maud busy. Without her gardening, she's going to be even more difficult to get along with. I heard that. I might have broken my leg, but my hearing still works. <laughs> Good luck. Well, what are you doing out there? The garden's not going to look after itself, you know. 
So, while Molly watered the garden exactly how Aunt Maud had told her, Millie tried to keep Aunt Maud busy with a story. Aunt, you're a special friend to all little guinea pigs. I don't like stories. I'm a doing person. I like to do. Find me something I can do. The next day, Millie was told to dig in smelly manure to make the soil rich for planting more vegetables, while Molly tried to find something for Aunt Maud to do. Aha! Uh -huh. A jigsaw? It's something to do, Aunt Maud. I don't see the point of jigsaws. What do you do when you finish them? But they're fun while you're doing them. Oh, fiddlesticks, I don't like fun. I like to do things that have a purpose. Besides, anyone can do a jigsaw. Oh. Millie, that's not a weed. Molly, pull harder. Those weeds aren't going to jump out of the ground by themselves, you know. Uh, Millie, that's not a weed either. Uh, Don't think of having a rest till morning tea time. I never take a break till lunch, and that's why my garden is the best in the whole town. Millie and Molly definitely had to find something for Aunt Maud to do. She was becoming impossible. What's this? It's wool, Aunt Maud. I can see that. What am I supposed to do with it? We thought you might like to knit a winter blanket. <laughs> I can't knit. Don't like knitting. I like gardening. I'm good at it. The best in the whole town. But it's something to do until you can garden again, Aunt Maud. Knitting is very useful and lots of people can't do it. You might become the best knitter in the whole town. Hmm. Is knitting too hard, Aunt Maud? We'll find something else for you to do. Yeah, that's the trouble with you young people. You give up too easily. <laughs> So Aunt Maud started to knit. At first she was slow and made mistakes. And a lot of fuss. Oh, fiddlesticks and fumble fingers! Over the next few weeks, Millie and Molly came each day and followed Aunt Maud's instructions on looking after the garden. Looks like we didn't give this one enough water. We'll make sure next time Aunt Maud won't be happy. But Aunt Maud had something else on her mind. At the end of the first week, Aunt Maud was still knitting, with less fuss. Fiddlesticks! And by the end of the month, she was knitting with no fuss at all. And the garden was looking as healthy as ever. Well, that's six weeks, Aunt Maud. Your leg's all better. About time. You can go back to your garden now. I'm not ready for the garden. Ooh. Huh? Hmm. When will you be ready? I don't know. Oh, why? Are you going to give up looking after my garden? Can't stick at it, eh? No, Aunt Maud. We'll mm -hmm. keep gardening. Uh. When will you stop needing blankets, Aunt Maud? When I'm ready. I heard that. Really? Yes, I will be the best knitter in the whole town. And while there was nothing wrong with Aunt Maud's hearing, Millie and Molly started to worry that something else was wrong with Aunt Maud when the whole house started to fill up with blankets. And Millie and Molly didn't know how to look after the garden when the winter snows came. So they called Dr Smiley again. What's the problem, Aunt Maud? Problem? What are you talking about? There's no problem. Well, if there's no problem, I'd better get back to the hospital. People are getting winter chills and need my help. See you later. So while Aunt Maud continued to knit blankets, Millie and Molly kept looking after the garden the best they could in the worst of weather. Bless you. Oh, not again. So bad was the winter that the hospital was filling up with patients. And Dr Smiley had a problem, which had only one solution. Aunt Maud. What is it this time? I have a problem of epidemic proportions. I need more blankets. Well, I've made the best blankets in the whole town. Take them. Take them all. Just make sure those sick people appreciate my hard work. Thanks, Aunt Maud. Amazing, my garden's still thriving in this snow. No thanks to those girls. Couldn't they stick it out? 
Oh no, quite the opposite. They're in the hospital. They caught the winter chills too, tending your garden. Oh? Even when it was cold and raining and even snowing. You don't say. Hmm. Soon, everyone who was sick had a nice, warm, Aunt Maud, best in the whole town, hand-knitted blanket. And Aunt Maud knitted two very special blankets, one for Millie and one for Molly. Both had stripes and lots of yellow because Aunt Maud knew that Millie and Molly liked stripes and lots of yellow. Hmm. Aunt Maud. Now don't be taking your time. Make sure these two get the very best attention. Don't worry, Aunt Maud. The very best in the whole town. Hmm. And by the time school holidays had finished, Millie and Molly were well again. Well, I see everyone seems to have done very well with their vegetable growing over the holidays. Humphrey, what have you there? It's a potato monster. I grew it all by myself and it eats all the other vegetables. Hmm, <laughs> very good, Humphrey. Um, Millie and Molly, where are your vegetables? Well, Miss Bly, stop everything. Oh, Aunt Maud. Millie and Molly grew these healthy vegetables all by themselves. <gasps> wow. wow! And lots of others besides. I'll have no argument. These two are the most tenacious gardeners I have ever seen. Well, next to me, of course. I'm still the best gardener in the whole town. Oh, then well done, Millie and Molly. <laughs> and nobody had ever seen Aunt Maud smile before. <gasps> oh! Fiddlesticks. <laughs>
I bet the people who live on the other side of the mountain don't have to feed their pets. Yes, but sadly you live on this side of the mountain, in a nice, warm, safe house with your mum and dad who love you and look after you. It's not very exciting. Lots of people would be very thankful for what you have. I suppose. Oh, did I tell you? Charlie said we can go up in a balloon, if you said it was all right. Please? Well... As long as Molly is allowed to go too. Yay! Hey, where are you going? I'm ringing Molly now. You can't ring her now. It's too late. Besides, you still haven't fed poor Marmalade. And you promised to tidy your room before you went to bed. Okay. Can't I do it tomorrow? People who live on this side of the mountain have to do it tonight. Mm-hmm. Here you are, Marmalade. Oh, this is empty. So what do you think, Molly? I don't really want to go up in the balloon. But we'll see all sorts of things. Up over the mountain. Who knows what's over there? Can't we just play in the park? Maybe we could even get pants like Charlie. Don't you remember how he got them? He crashed his balloon. But it'll be an adventure. We could send Dolly and Jemima. Molly... I want to stay here. But that's boring. You didn't think it was boring before you saw Charlie fly the mountain. Please, Molly. I know you're scared. I'm not scared. But Mum and Dad won't let me go unless you come with me. You could find someone else. No, I want you. Why? Because you're my very best friend. The next Sunday, Molly tried to be as brave as she could be. Baby girls! So her very best friend Millie could have the adventure she oh, oh, so wanted. Mm. Are we definitely going over the mountain? Looks like the wind's blowing the right way. Oh, Molly, isn't it exciting? Yeah. Could Tomcat come too? To keep Molly company. The more, the merrier. But then Marmalade would be lonely. Oh, then all right. They both can come. Yay! Soon the balloon was ready with everyone on board. Cast off! Firing! Hold on, you two. Good luck. You'll be all right, Molly. Just do what Charlie tells you to. Oh, Molly. Good luck. See if you can see our house. Have fun. All the ordinary things suddenly don't look so ordinary from up here. Look at all the red roofs. And look at the river. It's so curly and blue and pretty. All the trees are in such straight rows. Everything looks like toys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming with me, Molly. It doesn't seem so scary once you get up here. Nothing to be scared about. I've been flying these things for 30 years. I'm still here. Mountain's coming up. How long can we see what's on the other side? Not long, but I have to give the burners a big blast to make sure we get over all right. I look for another wind going the direction we want. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. There, the other side of the mountain. Oh, is this it? Beautiful, ain't it? I must suppose, but... Well, the trees are pretty, and the rocks. Yeah, 
But I was expecting something more interesting. Even our town is more interesting and pretty than this. Hang on now. What's happening? The wind's got us. Hang on very tightly now and don't let go. Can we please go home now, Charlie? Please, Charlie, find another wind to take us back. We'll have to go higher. Higher? Yes, it's the only way to find a wind that takes us the other way back home. Hold on tight. We should be going back to our side of the mountain now. When will we never show, Charlie? When we come down through the clouds and see the town below. Any minute now. Hey! There! Look! There's our side of the mountain! Hooray! Our troubles ain't over yet! What? I've only got a little bit of fuel for the burners. It's going to be a fast trip down. Not just yet. Have to leave it till the last moment. My tummy's turning inside out. I wish I was at my nice house with Mummy and Daddy. No, Tomcat, be brave. Charlie knows what he's doing. He's been flying balloons for 30 years. All right, I'm going to use the last of the fuel to slow us down. It'll still be a bumpy landing. Hold on. Is everyone all right? I... I think so. I'm all right, and so is Tomcat. Marmalade? Where's Marmalade? Maybe she jumped out when I wasn't looking. Marmalade! 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 Marmalade? Oh, poor Marmalade. You must have been so frightened. But Charlie's been playing these things for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, nearly had me another pair of pants today. So, gonna come up with me again next week? Um, no thanks, Charlie. It was a big adventure, but we like our side of the mountain best. Don't we, Molly? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, time to feed Marmalade. I already have. Without being asked. Well, something is definitely wrong. Someone's been into Millie's room and tidied up everything. Dad, I did it. <gasps> <laughs> What's all this about? Nothing. But it wasn't nothing. It was very definitely something. Millie was very thankful for what she had. And very happy to play with Jemima and Dolly and her best friend Molly while other people went to find out what was on the other side of the mountain.